Hi, everyone. Welcome to ENN. Welcome. On TV. Ray Rowe. It's brought to you tonight, of course, by our friends at Security Dodge. Go see Michelle Scalisian. Come. I got it. I got it. Everyone calm down. Uh -uh. I'd like to start off by saying good evening to Michael. <laughs> good evening to myself. To Michael. To Don. Flip can get mad at me. <laughs> to all of us and Mike Lupica. For, 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 for free, I, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll, oh, well, the worst <laughs> word that Mike Lupica has in his brain. The real F word, as I went on to call it. Uh, yes. To Stephen A. Smith. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. Y'all take care. Yeah, there was something going on there. Hey, what was happening? There? I don't think it was any of our business. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, guys. No, Y'all no, take care. It is my, our business because it happened on our air. To Frank Isola. My wife is, loves riding with you. <laughs> that's not right. See, that's not right. <laughs> that's the whole point. Yeah, but, but no, it's... To Joe Leo. Sam, 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 Sam,
A book deal? Yeah. What, what did she just No, get? you're joking. No. It's on page six. Read it. No. What, 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 what is she going to write about? Talk to her. But, all right, that's page. That's all right. That's a word. No, no, now, no. It could do? be a lot more than a word. Are you being serious? They said she has a yes. book deal. No, stop it. The girl who got famous on social for saying "hawk tua." Yes, is gonna write a book. Yeah. She's right now are- earning a living because she got fired as a teacher. She's earning a living signing merch. Well, good for her for that. Like, Wait, signing- why she she got fired? She was a current teacher when that video was taken. She, you're, so that wasn't like a college age video. That was like as she was an active it was, teacher. It was just recently, and and she is a teacher right now, or was. Well, they're saying it's a hoax. She got fired. So I don't know what to believe. All I know is that anybody that would read a book written about that can't read. So there's no market. You know what? Hey, uh, while we're at it, since we're talking about what a disgrace, we are, she should. Can they get her in the debate tomorrow? She should run for president. <laughs> yeah, why not? Why, let's we just get, get, get her. Let's let's uh, you know. Biden versus Trump versus Hawk Tua. It's it's the perfect it's the perfect way to have this whole thing play out. Maybe Aaron Rodgers be a running mate. Did you see that um, Bryce Harper got a hit yesterday and did the Hawk Tua celebration, which I can't really describe. There's a celebration now. Well, no, well, what she was describing, he did. He spit. Oh, would you stop? No. I don't want to go any further. But what are you? Well, what are you trying? To, are, are you, you trying dumb? To get are you dumb? Well, be- baseball players spit every day. That's not a celebration. Yeah, but, but but the thing is, is you're getting caught up in in the huck to a part of it. There was there was more to it than that. Way more that people are interested in. I want to find right? out who Pookie is. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Pookie? That's the guy. Did you watch the video? <laughs> yeah, I didn't. An- I, well, apparently you watched it 300 times. I spent five seconds on it, moved all my life. I didn't start going, I want to find out what this Hawk Tua person's all about. Maybe read her book. I, no, I don't know. I don't remember the details of Pookie. She was talking about the love of her life. I love you, Pookie. And by the way, I've already pre-ordered on Amazon the book. <laughs> Hasn't even been written yet. That's how good. That's how excited you are for and, it, and it won't be written. That's gonna, yeah, it's gonna be pop ups. It sure will. You know what they? they <laughs> by the way, they have. <laughs> we're gonna get there. Just give it, give it time, Michael. <laughs> what we'll get dumped? Anybody that doesn't know what this is about, give it time. You'll know. It will. We'll slip. <laughs> let's let's go to Woj, who's not talking about Hawk Tua, but hey, by the Woj way, happy was, birthday, to Derek Jeter. He's fifty today. Yeah, that bothers. Can me. you believe it? It's that, really that hard to believe. It bothers me more that he turned fifty than it bothered me when I turned fifty. Really? Was I glazing? Yeah, no, I get it. It's weird that Jeter's fifty. Happy birthday, Jeets. Let's hear from Woj uh, on just how much the Knicks wanted Mikael Bridges. The Knicks were determined to acquire Mikel Bridges, and they have been gathering up draft assets for years to get into the position to overwhelm somebody with an offer for a player they very much wanted. They didn't do it with Donovan Mitchell, but they did it today for Mikel Bridges. And you know what the Knicks are doing is trying to load up on big time two way wing players to take on the NBA champion Boston Celtics in the East. They get one with Mikel Bridges, and now they'll try to re-sign OG and Anobi, uh, you know, to bring back against the Celtics next year a group that can certainly score and more importantly guard that team. But you know, there were other teams who wanted to get at Mikel Bridges. He has been a coveted asset around the league. Just one of the really unique, versatile player who just fits anywhere. And now the four Villanova players are back together. Two national championships at Villanova and now they'll try to win a championship in New York. Yeah, I, I do take exception with Frank saying role player. I think he's more than that. Me, me too. I don't I, know I mean, if he's I, a superstar. He's, he's a star, but he's not a role player. Maybe Frank, maybe maybe what he was trying to say was he's he's not a number one superstar to lead a team. Like, it's not in the personality. It's not his style. As he pointed out, he faded away in some big games, and he didn't always want to speak to the press. That's There's something between Michael being that guy and being a role player. And I think he's between those things. Role player is, with all due respect, role player is Dante DiVincenzo. He's not well, that. It, 
it's it, it, I, I think when you hear role player, it comes across as pejorative. Yep. Right. That you're ju- you're just kind of there. Right? He's he's way more than that. Now maybe there are times that it might he might come off the bench, but he, the, the, there's a specific role that he has, and I think he's going to be a starter. But role, I, I don't. I, I'm not trying to put words into Frank's mouth, but when he said it, it definitely came across as negative. And I will well, say, I, even yeah. if you take away the role player um, name, they overpaid. And that's the only way I think the Nets were going to trade him to the Knicks. Because there are other teams that offered four first-round draft picks. The Knicks had to blow the other teams out of the water, and they did. So it was, it was an offer that the Nets couldn't refuse. But I understand what you're saying, like, in the bulk of the picks, but I don't think you're going to miss any of that. Maybe maybe 29 and 31, but that's way, way down the road. And if the Knicks win a championship between now and then, no one's going to care. You're going to watch the draft in 2029 and say, this was the Knicks pick back when they acquired uh, with the trade with the Nets. It'll be an afterthought if they are successful between now and then. But the, the the ones that are coming up, those are late first round picks, Michael. So what? They weren't going to have any impact on the Knicks. I agree, but it was an overpay. I agree. I agree but, that it was uh, that I would make the deal, but I believe it was a bit of an overpay because he's not so, a superstar. He's a really good player. But as Peter's been saying throughout the show, if that little villain of a pixie dust, but you know what set the tone something. for this? Hmm. What? Me? What Cleveland paid Back on May 20th. What Cleveland and Minnesota paid for Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert. They set a new, you know, a, a new line that other teams had across if they wanted to get difference makers. And you could say, okay, Rudy Gobert's a you know defensive player of the year, I think twice, but is he worth five first round draft picks? Well, the Minnesota Timberwolves felt that he was going to be the missing piece to beat Denver. And they were right. Then they then they just couldn't beat Dallas. And the Knicks probably think Bridges is the missing piece to get them to well, the conference finals. And I think Leon Rose deserves the benefit of the doubt. Because what were people saying when they got DiVincenzo? What were people saying when they got Hartenstein? Uh, I think people were very positive about Hart. That turned out to be way better than we thought it was going to be. Everyone like, turned so out better. Every single move feels like it's either was a was a pedestrian move at the time, or we thought it was good. Brunson the signing, and they all ended up being way better than anybody had thought. So why not think that this is? And if this turns out to be way better, oh my God, we have a Woj bomb. Wait, 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 wait. We have a Woj bomb. We have a big one. Oh, really? That's now? That's happening right now. That's a breaking Woj bomb. OG and Unobi has come to an agreement with the New York Knickerbockers. There you go. What are we talking? Well, give me the numbers again. North of 35? Five years, $212.5 million. North of 40, that is. That's, 40. Uh, there you go. And what the Knicks did was they and used the one thing that they had because he was their player. They gave him a fifth year. Other teams could only give him four. Right. So this turns out to be uh, what, what is it per year? Over forty. That's that's, that's over forty yeah, million. So a then, year. and then that means Hartenstein's got to be gone. Then. No, because they can still only offer Hartenstein sixteen. That there's a how limit to Hart- what they could offer Hartenstein. I think they by still the way, will much, do that. By the way, what world are we in? I'm already in. In I, my head is spinning at forty million for OG Ananobi. <laughs> what? What? Bless you, Don. What number could it be for Hartenstein? Much more than sixteen. 20. But I mean, but, what a! I gotta tell you, but, basketball is, but is incredible. You, but, but does but giving Hartenstein to sixteen, Michael, does that put them into the uh, the second April? I think they're willing to go near that. You know, if I think if they sign Hartenstein, they probably would trade Mitchell Robinson, and they they probably would avoid the second apron by a little. I love the apron. I'm a big apron guy. I want to throw something at you. Wow, that is interesting. So again, if you're just tuning in, not only. Is the Villanova connection complete with Mikael Bridges yesterday coming over to the Knicks? But, in fact, they have re-signed OG Anunobi five years, just over $40 million a year, according to Woj. So, a yeah. lot of Knicks action. Michael, how do you feel about my assessment that t- tonight is the the biggest Subway Series game we've had in some time? Why do you say that? Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and tell you why, and I'm glad you asked. I think for both teams, it's incredibly meaningful. For for the Mets, you win both. First of all, I just think given the nature of the relationship between the Mets and the Yankees, winning both is always kind of a big deal for the Mets. They get to 500. They get 
yet another win and add to what they've been doing the last few weeks, including continuing to win after the Diaz thing the other day um, and, and, and some slight injury concerns they've had the last couple days. And if you're the Yankees, you've kind of been going the other direction and, and reel, reeling a bit. Bad wow. outing from Garrett Cole. Uh, but Stanton's injured. Offense hasn't been good. If they get smacked up again today, I think wow. it's... I think. Let me just say this. It's particularly big if the Mets win again. If the Mets win again, I think both fan bases have a very strong feeling tomorrow for a regular season Subway Series game. What say you, Michael K? Well, I think this is big for the Yankees, and the Mets want to continue their winning ways. I think it would be a big boost for the Mets to get to 500, you know, because that's a mental hurdle. Um, if, you know, it's according to how the Yankees win or lose, like, it, if Heal doesn't pitch well, then I think there's some panic see, that starts to set in. That's, see, that's the biggest thing for me, because I know everybody, you included, Michael, make it seem like... Like it's just, it was just the one out. That's what it was. That outing, but the previous two were not at the height that he was the beginning of the season. Nah, so, you're wrong. I mean, no, he, don't, he had like don't a, say you're well, that, but, but that, statistically that, 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 you're that. wrong. I mean, the, the the last eight starts before the bad start, he had a 1.03 ERA. How bad could he have been? Well, nobody's saying he's that bad. It was just that he was pitching it like he's going to win the Cy Young level. And, and and I would say over the last three, it, the, the, the mild steps back, and then it bottomed out. I, I would disagree so what's, what's, with you. I mean, you could have your opinion. I have mine. I thought he pitched fine the other two, but he got racked by the Orioles, and we'll see what he does tonight. If he gets racked again, then I think there's a, a cause for concern. Yeah, but, but I'm just looking at the outings leading. Like, he was just lights out. I mean, this is more of a compliment than just how it all had started for him. So what were the outings that you're concerned about before the the bad outing against the well, Orioles? Well, again, again, I'm not concerned. But what do you what do you portray as uh, beneath what he was performing at? The, I, th- I know well, he went five innings, six innings. Well, uh, yeah, right. Well, but, but that's what I'm saying. He went five innings, four hits. Again, not 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 bad. But he only went five innings. It's not even a quality but that, start. But that's that's by design. They're trying to cut innings on him. All right. But you know, again, he was lights out. I mean, two hits in eight innings against the Angels. You know, one hit in six innings against Minnesota. And then the Dodgers went five and two-thirds, allowed five hits and three runs. They were all earned. And then the, the game against Boston, he went five innings, and he all right by design, but he did walk four in that outing. All I'm saying is, is they're, they're, they're fine, but he was like lights out. Then, then he kind of came back down to earth a little bit against the Dodgers and, and against the Red Sox, and then he got blitzkrieged against the Orioles. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you can make it, all right, it's just the one outing, but I'm just saying this guy was pitching at an unbelievable level, and over the last three starts, it, it's not been as much. The previous two were okay, not lights out, and then he got, uh, he got uh, sandbagged early in that game against the Orioles, so I, I don't think I was wrong. Well, I mean, uh, again, I disagree with your opinion. Okay, I shouldn't oh, have said different. you were wrong. I disagree agree with your opinion. I thought he pitched fine go. in the two games. I mean, right, the only warning flare that went up is when he got his I, backside handed to him against right. the Orioles. I'm not, uh, but I'm just saying, fine is not the way he was pitching earlier. Like, the reason that you survived Cole being out was because he was pitching lights out. And now you went from lights out to fine to bottoming out. All right. The, uh, yeah, it's only the one outing is what you would be concerned about, even if you are concerned. But I'm just saying fine makes my point. He wasn't fine early. He was lights out early. And now if he goes out and gets racked tonight, I think there's there's reason to believe that maybe he's coming back down to earth. There might even be reason to believe it's happening now. Because I don't that was tough to sustain, Michael. What he was doing early in the season was unexpected. Yeah, to everybody, including the A's. All right, Don, you'll be happy to know that although Messi had a uh, a thigh injury scare, um, he got treatment, and he said he hoped it was nothing serious, and he was able to finish out the 1-0 win for Argentina over Chile. And he's going to be playing at Yankee Stadium soon, right? Was that coming up? Because Nancy was showing me the tickets because we want to try to get Marco to oh, go. Oh, boy. Forget it, Michael. Tickets are that bad? Oh, my God. We're talking like thousands of dollars. You know, you might know someone at Yankee Stadium who could be helpful. No, no, I'm not asking him for anything. Who? Michael. Why? You want to get something from me? What? No, I'm not going to uh, anything from you. He's suggesting that I should ask you, he, but I'm not going to. In, in September, when Messi plays and Miami play at the stadium... 
Don said the tickets are outrageous. I said, outrageous. I said, you know people at the stadium. I think you could ask around and get some help. And he said he doesn't want to ask you for some reason. He can ask me anything. I'll try. I'll try to do anything for him. I don't know why he's being this way. I'm Was good. I glazing? I'm good. Wow. Don't be dumb. You went to St. Moron. Don't go to St. Moron. All right. Well, moving right along. I really like St. Moron. Oh, I love St. Moron. Yeah. I, I, I might stop that drop right at home. You went to St. Moron. Yeah. Yeah, Don't right go there. to St. Moron. I think I stopped right at you went to St. Moron. Right? Sure. I, I don't think I need. St Where is that located, so, Don? Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. And it's a Jesuit vehicle. <laughs> yes. It's like a. Uh, Jesus Christ of Latter-day Morons. Oh, my God. Let's, let's you went to St. Moron. Let's offend more people. Well, who's offended? These don't, these don't Only exist. Morons. I think Met fans are offended. <laughs> Why would Met fans it's be Because offended. of the Gary don't Ron and Keith dumb. stuff. Uh, well, that's separate altogether. Uh, well, Michael Glenn Say I mean, Don, I'm sorry. <laughs> Both of you, but more Don. Well, I don't care about uh, Glenn Sather. Glenn Sather has announced his NHL retirement at 80 years old. What a career. Hell of a run. Don, where do you put him on sort of the Oh, it's, it's great. And I, and I think it's kind of unfair because you can look at the, the, the Ranger era, which, which started out rough for him. It's hard to believe that you know, 24 years here. But after the lockout, which I think is the best thing that happened to the Rangers, that they started to think more hockey instead of signing these big contracts. And I think he put the Rangers back on track. And then why they went to a Stanley Cup final, why they've been good now with a lot of the players that he was able uh, to help bring in. So, and it, of course, his record speaks for himself in Edmonton. Nice guy. I, I think an underrated nice guy. He doesn't do a lot of media, so he kind of comes across as gruff and standoffish. But I found him to be a nice guy. Always got along with him. I got to be uh, in Edmonton calling a game when he was... Um, when they had a ceremony for him when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Um, I, I, I like Glenn a lot. Alex Morgan was left off the United States uh, a women's soccer team for the Olympics. Is there outrage? Are there are these be, being debated on the debate shows? It will be the first team's uh, major tournament without Alex Morgan since 2008. I'm going to miss Alex. I mean, she's been a stalwart for this oh, team for so, word. so long. And, um, yeah. Uh, the the Minnesota Lynx took out the Liberty last night at the Commissioner's Cup in the final. I was disappointed to see in it. In front of you and there. Andrew. Right in front of me and Andrew, but I had a great, great time. Shout out to the Liberty and uh, shout out to my new favorite player. And remember, I was all in on Sabrina last year when mm -hmm. she had the battle you versus were. Steph. But after watching her play in person, and you know, she was trained by Kobe. You right. can see that Mamba mentality did, did in person. Did you imbibe? I had one Bud Light. I haven't been imbibing, so I had one light beverage, and that was it. That'll do it for ENN, brought to you by Security Dodge. As we say so long to yes, we'll see you tomorrow.